Hello, my loves. My number one requested video, whether it's on social media or here on YouTube, is to show my entire bag collection. So I'm going to do that for you today. This will be a high level overview of each and every bag. So of course, if you have questions or you want me to go into a deep dive of all of the dimensions or qualities or my thoughts, just let me know in the comments. I'll definitely make separate videos on each bag if that's what you prefer. But people have been asking for my entire collection. So here we go. Okay, I wasn't sure how to tackle this, but I'm gonna do it by, I think, designer. I'm just gonna grab them off the shelf in no particular order at all. And let's start with Louis Vuitton. I'll do this one first. This is the Louis Vuitton Cousin PM. This is the PM size. I love the size of the chain that it comes in. The smaller size of this I looked at, see, we're already getting too detailed. <laughs> but just so you know, I looked at the smaller size, the BB, and the size of the bag was really, really cute, but the chain was way larger than this, and it was really heavy. Plus, this chain is super cool because it can actually serve dual purpose as a statement necklace. And there are so many imprinted Louis Vuitton symbols on the chain. It's super, super cute. So, of course, this one comes with the canvas strap that makes it a little bit more casual, but a lot more comfortable to wear than the heavy chain. I have the rose ballerine interior with the black emprunt leather. And I actually waited to get this when we went to Paris because it was black and silver. I love black and gold, but as you'll see, all of my black bags have gold hardware. I needed black and silver, so this was the perfect addition and the latest addition to my collection. Next up is going to be my vintage Louis Vuitton Papillon. I did feature this bag in another video. It's one of my absolute favorites. It's from the 90s. It's super old, but I definitely love wearing this bag because of the shape of it. It's actually a, it's supposed to be a butterfly, French word for butterfly, Papillon. I still get compliments to this day when I wear this bag out. I think it's just a chic bag. It depends on how you wear it because it can look a little dated, but I love that pop of vintage whenever you're either wearing a simple outfit or something dressy. It's just like it adds interesting dynamics to your outfit, to any outfit, really. I get lots of use out of it. Next up, my Pochette Matisse. This color I always get complimented on. The bag itself is very functional, very useful. It's the accordion style. I fit so many mommy needs in it. So when we have the kids, this one definitely works out. We're still in potty training mode with my fourth child. So I can fit, you know, a pull up or two and some wipes. It's got the leather crossbody strap or you can wear it just top handle, which is usually what I prefer. But at least you have the option. And I'm always complimented on this color. It's called Turtle Dove, just in case you're wondering. I've had this one now, I think for about five years or so. It's definitely getting a lot of use. I haven't had any issues. I know there were some issues with the canvas version, but this is the emprunt leather. I haven't had any issues at all. And truly, 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 this bag is like a workhorse. Up next, one of my most favorite bags in my entire collection, definitely top Louis Vuitton bag. And if you watched my five bags that I fell in love with at first sight video, you'll definitely know why. This is the Lock Me bag. I got this bag in Hawaii while we were on a baby moon with my third child. I just love the colors, fell in love with all of the colors. I feel like it's a unique bag because it's got three different colors in it, the pink, the tan, and the green. It's also really functional. This one expands as well. You have the two separate compartments on the inside. It does button on the side to either expand or contract depending on which you need it to do. But it fits a ton of stuff. I just never overstuff it because I am kind of careful with this bag since it's one of my favorites. It's definitely great when I travel because it's compact so I can pack it away easily. But also because you can wear it crossbody, you can remove this strap and use it just top handle or let that chain be a little decorative addition on the front. I think it's so cute. To me, it's like a neutral bag, even though it's bright pink here. The neutrals definitely allow you to wear it with different things. She's one of my favorites. Okay, moving along. The next bag is definitely a functional one. This is the multi pochette accessoire in the emprunt leather. I have it in black with the gold hardware. It's the one that comes, well, I mean, it's the multi pochette. So it comes with the second little baby bag that you can hook on in the front. You know, I've had this and I've never worn it doubled up like this before ever. I always wear it separate. 
you have the ability to expand the strap, the leather strap. You also have this beautiful gold and leather woven chain that you can add to either carry the bag or just as a decorative piece. To me, it's a lot going on <laughs> when you have everything. But I know some people love that and that's fine. Having options is what we pay for. So with this bag, that's what I was going for. But you can wear it crossbody. I have never worn it crossbody either. I'll wear either the, the small pochette with the gold chain when we're going out more fancy type scenarios and it's great for traveling because it's so small so it really serves as like a catch-all when I'm traveling and then I just throw the chain on it and I'm ready to go to a nice dinner or something like that and the second way that I prefer is the larger pochette with the shorter strap so this is how I kind of wear it on like an everyday basis when I don't really need to carry a lot of things or we're going to like a basketball game or something like that. And it's just kind of like a little casual, cute shoulder bag. I love this bag. This is my favorite way to wear it. But like I said, when we do travel, I tend to wear this one. Now I'm 5'9 and this does hit a little bit longer. It's not like a under the shoulder or under the armpit type of bag. It's more of a longer chain that is coming back in season for 2023 2024 so hopefully in 24 it'll be more of a thing i've been seeing longer chains that kind of hit at the hit the handbag at the waist so i feel like i'm already prepared for that i don't have to go buy another bag because this one definitely serves that purpose keeping up with the trends use what you have don't go buy new unless you absolutely want something brand new <laughs> This one served more of a purpose for under the armpit type of bag. You can lengthen it and shorten it, like I said. So this is definitely a functional bag. Next up, the Lock Me Bucket Bag in prune color with the rose ballerine interior. The Neo Noé was a bag that I looked at for quite a bit of time. I definitely wanted a bucket bag. The Neo Noé has such a nice history to it as far as being an actual wine bag. Instead of going the more traditional route, I fell in love with this color. It's absolutely stunning. I don't know if it's picking up correctly on camera, but it's more on the purpley side than the brown. And it has the lock closure and it has an adjustable strap you can wear it right here at the hip length or you can expand it and it dangles a little bit longer this is my preferred length so I'm not even gonna mess with the, the straps and I've had this bag probably since about 2016 2017 somewhere in there and I love the fact that it also has silver hardware because I probably only have three bags or so that have the silver hardware and this is one of them and because the color is so bold I think that gold would have been overkill for sure the silver to me is a little more subtle and it really lets the color of the bag stand out so this is one of my favorites as well because it's more of an everyday bag i wanted an everyday bag that was functional that was comfortable and this met all of my needs but it still is beautiful and can be dressed up or dressed down this is the serene mm i love the fact that it has feet on the bottom i think that that elevates any bag it came with a luggage tag that you were able to get uh the hot stamp so i have my initials the leather straps are super comfortable they had a few different colors but i did choose the combination of the monogram with the black I I saw someone else that had just the all black empreinte leather and it's absolutely gorgeous this bag unfortunately is discontinued hopefully they'll bring it back because it's so functional it's the accordion style as well it's got three compartments that expand really well the middle compartment is already pretty large and then the two compartments on the sides are a little thinner but you can definitely fit things in there and expand them if you need to and they have like a magnetic closure so it keeps all of your items safe and sound with the zipper closure in the middle which is definitely a have. I was trying to serve my need for a diaper bag with this one. I feel like I went a little too classy and I didn't want to use it for that. That is going to be the kimono tote. And yeah, I'd stuff all my bags and have them in their desk bags for proper storage. Of course, if you watched my uh, closet organization video, you would know this. This is the kimono tote and I love the clean lines that it has. I love the shape of this bag. It fits so much. There's an internal pocket and then there's just two wide open compartments on the side. I think it's beautiful. The gold hardware, the gold hot stamp here in the front and we have the feet on the bottom and the traditional classic monogram mixed with the black leather the handles are so soft you can wear it as a toe on your shoulder but I kind of just tend to carry this one in my hand or in the crook of my arm it's just such a beautiful bag I love to carry this up next, I do have another vintage classic. I did a whole video on this one called What You Should Actually Buy Instead of the Neverfull. I do own a Neverfull. This is the Cabas Miso. So it's the middle size Cabas tote. And this one is so functional to me because you have these long, soft leather wide straps. 
and you have the zipper, which makes all the difference compared to the Neverfull. You have the pocket on the inside, you have the huge capacity of uh, space. The only downside is that it is all the shed of leather on the bottom, so that can tend to look a little worn. It's got water spots if you can see on mine, but I don't mind that at all. I think with vintage bags, I just love when they're more worn in and used. It just goes to show that you are actually using them. In the fall, this is one of my favorites. I feel like with heavy coats, it's hard to get some of these bags on your shoulder, but this one has plenty of space to go over thick coats, thick sweaters. It has plenty of room where if you get hot, you can take your sweaters or your scarves off and have plenty of room to carry them around. And it's just so functional. It was one of my first pre-loved purchases. So I'm really happy with this one. I almost forgot because I have these tucked over here. This is my Urs Fisher Memory Sketch Speedy 25. I only have one Speedy bag. I want another one. Maybe before the year is out, I'll get one. I kind of want a vintage one, just like the traditional Speedy. This is the 25. It was a collaboration with Urs Fisher. I did feature this in one of my previous videos. It's very functional because it is a Speedy. It holds a lot. It's very cute, but it is a loud bag. So I tend to wear it when I have simpler outfits on. Surprisingly, it tends to go with a lot. I get plenty of of compliments on this one all the time and even if I didn't it just makes me so happy <laughs> this is one of my favorites up next is another vintage baby and can you believe that they brought this back they just released some well they haven't really officially released it but we all know there are bag lovers out there doing the Lord's work and showing us what is coming before it even comes and they have pictures of this bag being re-released for 2024 I'm super excited this is the Louis Vuitton croissant I actually bought this bag pre-loved about a year ago. I know at the time I thought it was a bit pricey for such an older bag. I paid like $840, $850. The new ones that come out, they actually have the tab, like my multi pochette accessoire, they have those little tabs on the front. I really hate those. The new one does have that on there and the strap is a little bit longer and has the kind of like the belt bag, the Celine belt bag where you have the leather that kind of hangs down. I could take or leave that. It doesn't really bother me, but the fact that they're reissuing the bag and I already have one, I don't have to worry. <laughs> I'm super excited. The Louis Vuitton croissant, she is real cute. This is the MM size. I love the GM because it's so huge. PM is a little bit too small for my body frame, but it's super cute too. It's got the beautiful red leather interior. This one just patinaed so beautifully. I was really excited about this purchase. And now on the pre-loved market, it's super hard to find these. So I'm happy that I went ahead and made the commitment and got this one I did. But you can still find them out there. Cheaper than I'm sure they're gonna be in the next six months or so. Look out if it's something that you've been interested in. This one's going to be simple. It is the Neverfull and this is the GM size. The only bag that I ever sold was the Louis Vuitton MM size. I got the same amount of money that I paid for it maybe two or three years after I had it. I could have probably sold it for more but I was just trying to be reasonable. After I sold that one a few years went by and I realized how functional it was and how much I missed it and I actually bought the larger size. So I still love this bag, use this bag mostly for travel. I don't necessarily just carry it around the city just because I love all of my bags and I, I tend to rotate them and I love the smaller ones especially now that my kids are older I don't have to carry so much stuff I really love that this is a very functional bag it's so durable this is still in perfect condition and this is probably the bag that I baby the least and I'm really careful with all of my things just in life I'm just like a careful person so the fact that I put this one through it and it's still in perfect condition that lets me know that this bag is going to be in my collection forever. This is not going to be fun putting all this stuff back. This one I didn't actually get from Fashion File. It's just that that bag was big enough. This is the Artsy and Damier Azure. The Artsy was discontinued or I don't know if it was discontinued for a tiny bit of time or if they just changed the design all of a sudden. They now have it with this leather trim piece around here and I actually don't like that just because we know the Vachetta changes and it shows water marks and water spots and things like that. This version of it, which is the older version, is a lot easier just to take care of. You don't have to worry about the peeling leather. It goes uh, right under your armpit when you put it on your shoulder. If you have deodorant or lotion on your arms or anything that can definitely change that vachetta so I'm not sure why they put that there it fits so much this is the artsy mm I think Ooh, I can't even remember I've had this one this was the second designer bag that I had ever purchased even though people are a little afraid of the damier because it tends to kind of yellow the white parts tend to yellow I actually think that mine hasn't really yellowed it just kind of looks a little more tan than when it started out but I haven't cleaned it or anything I know you can take like water wipes and stuff and kind of wipe down the canvas which I've never done so I feel like it's in 
great shape. This strap I actually purchased from a company called Dress Up Your Purse. If you are a devout handbag lover and you've seen lots of people's videos, I'm sure you've heard of them before. But I've gotten lots of compliments when I wear it out and about just kind of on the shoulder like this. It's definitely a mom bag. You can fit a ton of stuff. I love the braided handle here and the feet on the bottom. So this bag is another one that's functional, durable, and beautiful all at the same time. I'll show these last three little babies together. This is my collection of the mini pochette accessoire. They're so cute. I love these bags just for catch-alls in my purse or to take for events when we go to concerts or sporting events, things like that where you have that tiny bag roll. This one is a collector's item from Christmas, I think 2017. And so I don't really wear this one as much. When I do, I usually wear it on this side anyway, just because it's just a clean monogram side, but I love the fuchsia tab that it has on the side. This one was from the Trunks collection. And I just love that it has the address of the flagship store in Paris because we did visit that one. So it's kind of a little sentimental for me. The tan on the front really just goes with anything. So I don't care if that's showing or not. And then of course the, Carefree Damier a bean because of the dark leather and the dark pattern. It just kind of matches everything. And I don't have to worry about anything happening to it. They're also durable, tiny, and functional. I'm just missing the Damier Azur. So I probably will buy one of those pre-loved because the price of this has now gotten almost to a thousand dollars, close to 800 for sure, which by the time you throw in tax, it's going to be like 900, which is close to a thousand. So <laughs> it's just too much. Pre-loved, you can find them for about $400 or so, which is still absolutely crazy because I think I remember them being like around two something when I first started my collection and I just wasn't really worried about it. Yeah. These are functional. I love them. I use them. So depending on, you know, how you value and how you're going to use your bags, it may or may not be worth it still to this day. I'm so glad to have these in my collection. I believe that's all of the Louis Vuitton. <laughs> I'm actually not going to go through my small leather goods. I did an entire video on my favorite SLGs and I don't think I've added, I added actually a few items to that and I can do an updated version next year, <laughs> but let's stick to the bag. So next up, Let's do Fendi because it's next on the shelf. I think this was my absolute first Fendi bag. I, oh no, it's not. Let's start with the first one just because I said that. So this was my first Fendi bag going to like a different fashion house for the first time. I wanted to make sure that the bag was multifunctional. I learned my lesson a few times with my Louis bags and my Gucci bags. And I said, I want it to be multifunctional and still cute you know, something that could last a long time and, and be worn in various ways. I got a belt bag, which I'm super happy with. I don't wear it as a belt bag as much. It comes with this chain and it has the D rings on the inside. You can unhook it. So I've used this chain on like a Prada wallet before just to be able to convert some of my other bags. It hits at the cutest spot kind of by the butt cheek and the fact that you can wear it as either an evening shoulder bag or you can wear it as a clutch and completely remove any strap or wear it as a belt bag they give you the belt and it has the loops that come on the inside and when you wear it it doesn't show those loops which I was worried about so you can comfortably wear it and move around and not have to worry about it being seen because the, the way that it hits so perfectly flat on your hip. If you do want to wear it as a belt bag, the option is there and it's super comfortable. I know I've actually seen people still to this day wear this bag. It's not that popular. There's a few people online that I've seen where they wear it still kind of crossbody with the bag on the center. And then you can still, of course, wear it as a belt bag. If you're going to, you know, be moving around a lot and just want to be hands-free. Love this bag still. I guess I can lay out all of my bags. Let me see. Yeah, let's put this here. Okay, so let's do Fendi here. This is going to be so crazy. All right, next, that was my first Fendi bag. This is my last Fendi purchase. When we went to Vegas for the Usher concert, yes, when I wiped the sweat off of his body his face not his body but his face i ended up getting this because my husband he liked to play blackjack just for fun and he actually won a bunch of money so that trip was just fantastic because of the whole usher situation the concert the experience and then the fact that he won money so we did go to the fendi store and bought this purse after which again is another one that you can wear in multiple ways this one has the detachable strap as well so it's got a different version of the chain link this chain is a lot more dainty than the last chain that I just showed you so I'm sure I'll be using it on other bags if I 
want a cuter, smaller chain. Also, it comes with a leather strap, which is really short. I don't really feel like changing them because I tend to wear the chain straps more, but let me just show you kind of what it looks like. So how cute is that? So this strap allows you to either hold it in your hand like a top handle or put it right under your arm as like a little shoulder bag. Super cute. And then you have the option of the chain, which you can double up, shorten, and all the things. Several options with this bag. I love it. If you watched my worst handbag video, you'll remember this one. I still feel the same way. As far as looks and aesthetic, she's just so cute. I never got rid of her. This is the Fendi Sunshine Tote. I've seen the really large versions of it that's kind of like the Louis Vuitton on the go, or I guess some people would compare it to the Neverfull or so. But I just think that this little version is so cute. It's just not the most functional as I explained in that video, but it does come with a long leather strap, crossbody capabilities or shoulder length capabilities. And then how I prefer to wear it is the top handle. It is a cute little bag. It's got the feet on the bottom. You know, that just elevates the bag for me. <laughs> and it's all in the details with this one. The way that they position their logo in certain places, the stitching, they just really made this a beautiful bag. It's just not the most functional. So I kept it and I still use it. And I think I'm going to keep it in my collection forever. So before the Usher concert, this was my most recent purchase. And this is, I forgot what this is called. A bendy little wristlet thing. <laughs> But this is so cute. And I know they had this out for like a year or two now, but the fact that there's new colors, I just absolutely love this. It's like a little croissant thing. I don't know how to explain it. I get the most compliments off this tiny little bag. You would think that people wouldn't even really notice it because it's so small. When I wear it, I wear it on my wrist. So when I go out, you know, you're hands free. You can carry whatever you need to your phone, well, your phone, because it can't fit in the bag. So you're definitely carrying your phone. But you know, you have a drink or anything like that. If you're out and about, it's super cute. And it's almost like a little piece of arm candy. It doesn't fit much, but the necessities, perfume, lip gloss, you know, maybe your car keys. It really doesn't fit a lot at all. It's kind of ridiculous, but it's so cute. It's also hard to get in and out of if you do fit what you need. I just take all of my little tiny little sample things, throw them in there. I don't even know if my card holder fits actually. I may just have the cards all sitting together. So just beware if you've been looking at this bag. It's totally not functional. It's very beautiful. It's so cute. The leather is amazing. It has an optional strap that you can buy that's basically a gold strap just like the last two that I've shown you so you can attach them to these two rings on the side and still you know have your bag closed in the crescent shape if you prefer or just leave it completely open so there's options with this bag as well that chain though was like $700 and I have two bags that come with two different types of chains and they have the Fendi logo on them so you better believe I will be using those for this bag <laughs> one of my favorites it wasn't one of my favorites in the beginning, but I absolutely love this now, is the Shearling Fendi Bucket Bag. I think for the winter, I'm really into textures. This Shearling bag with the Fendi logo printed all over is just so adorable. It comes with this longer strap in addition to the handle that you can hold. I actually wear it with both on there at all times because the strap is a little hard to get on and off. It's the button closure instead of like a hook or a lobster claw, something like that. I wish they would have made it that way. So I just leave this on. So when I have it on my shoulder, it kind of just dresses the bag with a little, you know, extra decoration. I really love to carry it in the top handle style. So I'll fold it up, stick it in there and then put my stuff on top of it. So it's kind of like a last resort if I need to be hands-free or like if I'm just tired of carrying it, then I can move around my stuff, pull out the strap and it's there. Most of the time I'm wearing it with the strap tucked in. I love, love, love these Fendi logos on the sides. I think that was such a cute touch because they did it on both sides. So no matter which way your bag is, you can see it. And it's drawstring closure, but because of the fur, it is really tough to close, to be honest. So I usually have like a little pouch or something that I keep all my items in just to make sure if I sling it around, I'm not losing my stuff. Some of these bags are a little more fickle than others, but I appreciate the bag itself so much that I will navigate around those little issues. So this one's definitely a keeper. She's definitely worth it. And I think I might've got it for a push present on my last baby. Yeah. 
So there's a little bit of sentimental value there too. There's no feet, but she makes up for it in other ways. <laughs> Most of my Fendi bags are small. I don't know why. So this is like the largest Fendi bag that I have. She's definitely the heaviest and that's the Fendi first. I absolutely love all of these colors. I can take this off and I'm not going to lie. I baby this bag because there's so many different textures here. There's suede, there's metallic, there's regular painted leather. And I just feel like those are all of the types of textures that get messed up the easiest <laughs> and the most. So I do baby this bag. I love that the interior is the traditional monogrammed Fendi Fs. The one thing I would change is this one came with a leather strap and a lot of the other Fendi first came with a metal strap. So it was just the, the design of the bag. I even asked if I could switch it, but no, this particular bag came with that particular strap. So we went with it, but I love that even the way that you attach the strap is a little bit different. You pull this out and swing it over, pull this out and swing it over. And then you have the actual hooks to hang the strap on and you can wear it cross body or over the shoulder. The strap is adjustable, but again, I wish it came with a metal one, although like I said, I have the other two metal ones, so I might be trying that out. She is an odd shape, but she fits all your necessities easily. She fits my phone in addition to all of my little knickknacks that, you know, you need for a night out. And this is one of my favorite bags in my entire collection. Whew, I cannot believe my voice is getting a little tired. <laughs> Next, let's do kind of the one-offs. So let's do Versace. I got this bag in Vegas. I needed a bag for the Renaissance tour. So just for Beyonce, I know, but I fell in love with this bag and I've been wearing it ever since. Metallics and especially silvers, both right now are big in fashion. And I think we are just seeing an increase in that trend right now. Even if we weren't though, Metallics make me happy. I've always been attracted to metallics. Even the Fendi first I just showed you had the metallic in it, metallic gold. So I'll love it forever anyway, but I think it's so cute. This is a Versace Medusa something. I will say that the handle feels kind of like plasticky, which I don't like, but it does make the bag a lot lighter. So this bag is so easy, so functional, so cute, dainty, and it comes with a strap. And it also has card slots on the inside. So you don't have to worry about having any type of card holder or your cards just being loose in there. It's got you covered. So this was just a simple bag. And the good thing about Versace is that it does go on sale. So I think I got this bag at 30% off, which was a true win. And it was something that I needed in my collection. I need metallic gold still, but at least I have metallic silver and I got it on sale. Next will do my one and only Dior bag. I've been looking at another one that's actually pre-loved. So maybe I'll add to my collection soon, but I got this in Paris. My first trip to Paris was in September. We visited the flagship Dior store. It was truly an experience. It was so amazing. So I wanted to get something really just to commemorate that. I really didn't have my heart set on a Dior bag and I've never really been like over the top in love with Dior. I appreciate Dior. I do like a lot of the design and aesthetic, but I just think that they're so overpriced. It's kind of crazy. But the book tote was something that I always loved. It was a more casual bag. And so the mini book tote to me was just the cutest little thing. I've worn this several times since I gotten it with dresses, with jeans. I just think it's the cutest thing. This fits the perfect amount of stuff. I hate carrying a lot of things, especially things that I don't need. So this is absolutely perfect. And it can be worn for date night because it's so small and dainty or just on a regular day out and about. I did have it engraved in the back because it's so small. It can only fit a certain amount of characters. And they said that if you picked an actual picture character that that counted as two. So three total letters or a character in a letter. So I went ahead, I wanted my initials IC and the sales rep said, well, we know a lot of times people will, for I use the Eiffel Tower. And I thought, how perfect is that? Because I only really got this to commemorate my trip and have a memory and to have a piece of Dior from the flagship store. So I got the Eiffel Tower for my eye and then I got the C for my last initial. And I just think it's so special that I can remember it that way. You don't really see it, especially when I carry it. I usually carry it with this in the front, but it's something that I know is there and it's just really special to me. So I love this bag. Actually, I forgot this isn't a one-off, but I don't have much of Celine. I absolutely love this bag. Celine is very high priced to me as well. 
well. I just think this is beautiful. I love the color, Amazon green. I love the Triumph Seas traditional classic. And this is the box bag. This is the medium size. I think the teen is really cute too. It's a little bit more rectangular and this is a little more square, even though it's still rectangular, but the accordion style, you guys know, I love because it's so functional. Only one strap. It is a, a adjustable, but it's pretty much, you know, shoulder bag or crossbody bag. This really elevates an outfit just because it's so simple with this beautiful triumph seat in the middle. I have one other Celine bag. Let me grab that. This one I have stuffed in a few different kind of ways because I wanted to make sure it was covered from all directions. And that's because it's white canvas. It's like a cream color canvas. So this is the Celine, I believe it's called the horizontal canvas. I love this bag. I forget about it because to be honest, I kind of baby it and I shouldn't baby it. It comes with a lock and two keys. And it's because this bag is so huge on the inside and it adjusts. So it's so huge on the inside. It just has the one pocket. Let me see if I can show you this. Even though I'm not supposed to do a deep dive, I appreciate this. So it has the one large pocket. The zipper, however, when it zips closed, there's a little D ring right here that you put that zipper through and then you can hook your lock through that. I don't know if, if it's easy to see <laughs> that I'm trying, but that way you still have some kind of sense of security with this bag. I love the fact that this canvas has these really pretty functional speckles in it. So you can't really tell. I have a few stains on this bag and you can't really tell. And it is actually easy to clean. I'll tend to use some like spot cleaner, like shout or something like that in order to clean it. And it's never given me any issues. I have a few more marks and stuff on the inside that I really don't care about because I use this to travel. It's kind of like a beachy vibe. So it's a, it's a good summer bag. It's just that the color is a little difficult to work with and the logo is massive. So logo mania lovers, get you one of these. <laughs> also Prada, I don't really have a lot of Prada. I actually, I don't even know. I think this is really the only Prada bag that I have. And this was kind of like an impulse buy. I used to live, well, I'm from San Antonio. We used to travel back home to see my parents and they have a Prada outlet over there. So when I first started my collection, we traveled down there and I was like, oh my gosh, I have to get something because the pricing is just so good. The quality on this is unmatched and I feel like their quality just isn't the same. So I haven't gotten anything since. I have the feet on the bottom, luggage tag, key and lock this bag is just super cool i love it it's got these two really deep side compartments so the lock is huge this is like one of those doctor bags or like a travel it's almost like a overnight duffel you know i'm tall so it doesn't look too bad on my frame but this thing can get heavy even right now it's empty other than my stuff air tissue but there's several compartments in this bag and I love that you can really stuff it out if you need to it's a great travel bag it's really like a classy bag so I'll travel with this bag and this will be like my little personal item along with my carry-on roller bag and the handles are long enough that it is comfortable to sit on top of the bag and roll along and then when I get to wherever I'm going depending on what we have going on I will use it as an actual purse or day day trip type bag it just depends but multifunctional, great quality. I absolutely love this bag. And if I find more on the pre-love market like this, maybe a little bit smaller, I would definitely snag one. Now let's get to Chanel. I recently just started my Chanel collection, which I'm sad about because of the pricing, of course. So I think my first Chanel purchase was in 2022. I said, all I really need is this one and I'm done. And I kind of held true to that. I have two pre-loved bags other than this one, but this is all I really needed. I do absolutely love my trendy CC. This one, I make sure that I store properly. I have it in the champagne gold. I wanted it in the solid, like the gold, the yellow gold. Definitely knew I didn't want the silver just because I tend to wear more gold and I think it looks better on my skin tone, but I'm happy that I got the champagne because to be honest, whether I'm wearing metallic silver shoes or gold shoes, it looks fine. <laughs> the gold is such a light colored gold. And I thought I would have to baby it more than I actually do. It is lambskin and everyone has horror stories about lambskin, but I have scratches and scrapes on here that you can't see unless you're looking really, really close. And on top of that, you can buff them out. I just have been lazy and I haven't used the little buffer towel that they give to buff them out. So you can see some creasing, some scratches, but 
I, again, love a bag to be actually used. And I will be passing all of my bags down to my girls. And I feel like I want them to enjoy it. So I don't want to be mad that I protected them and kept them perfect. And then they destroyed them. I am so happy that I have this in my collection. It's getting harder and harder to get the Chanel's and they're classics. So I really didn't need anything else but this one. Let me show you the other two. <laughs> the next Chanel is a pre-loved. I always wanted the Chanel 19 because if you look at my bags, I don't like hard, sharp line structured bags. I like the hobo look, the soft lived in look. If you look at the ones that have structure, for me, they always have rounded edges or puffier quilting. It's something in there that adds some kind of element of softness to it usually. So when I saw this, I knew I had to have it. Like I said, pre-loved. And it reminded me of the Chanel 19, but it's a vintage bag. I think the year it was made was 91. And the quilting on it is just so loved and so soft and supple and squishy. I don't worry about this bag at all. The strap is the most comfortable strap of any bag that I have. It's a thick, soft lambskin leather. So this is one of my absolute favorite bags. I got it under, I think it was just under 1800. And I just love this bag. The corners were a little worn and I polished it up with some leather polish. You can't even tell anymore. So I'm not afraid at all to try to doctor up a little leaven on a bag. But I absolutely love this bag. The size, the suppleness, everything. This is one of my favorites. I use this almost every single day. Love it. Okay, last Chanel is going to be my cherry red flap. So this is a rectangular flap. I forgot what it's called. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry, guys. I can always, like I said, get you details later in the comments or on another uh, video. But this one is like a starburst cherry red. I did an entire video on this actually. So yeah, if you do have questions on this one, just go watch that. But again, the quilting is so soft and supple. This is an older vintage bag. I absolutely love it. It's got the classic tan on the inside, super soft. I'm not concerned about this one at all. And I love the fact that it's a little bit different with the details of the uh, leather woven straps along the side and even down into the bag itself. So this one is super comfortable, super cute and different lived in which is one of my preferences. So I love this one. I'm so happy this one's in my collection and I did get this one pre-loved. Moving into what I think is the last category. No, two more categories. I have Gucci and Loewe, which should move pretty quickly. So Gucci, I will start with the large bags. My first Gucci bag that I ever got is a tote bag. It's also red. And I am so happy that red is coming back for this season just because I love red on multiple skin tones. And so I feel like whenever something is in season, of course, we get all of the options to buy. So now is the time to stock up on red, whether it's in season or not. If it looks good on you, if you love the way it looks, or if you feel good in it, stock up now, seriously. So this tote is the first Gucci bag that I ever got. It's just a very functional bag. It's got feet on the bottom, lobster and D-ring closure that you can use. You can have it more rectangular and pull the sides out or push them in and have it a little more, I guess it's like a more of a square or trapezoidal type shape. This bag is super functional, very comfortable. I don't think there's anything super special. I just love this bag. You can wear it very casually because there's not much hardware. So with jeans and a t-shirt, like it's fine, a little pop of color, or you can dress it up and add all of your own accessories as far as jewelry goes and still be cute with just a simple bag. It does have a huge logo. You can always turn that around and still just have a lovely red functional bag. The next large Gucci bag that I, I got pre-loved and I paid only $380 for this bag. It's all leather. It's just that it had a lot of scratches and all it needed was some leather conditioning wipes. Wipe it down, let it dry. Did the same thing again 24 hours later. To me, now it's in perfect condition and I absolutely love this bag. So it's an all leather hobo style tote, but it's got this huge horse bit right here. And the Gucci horse bit right now is so on trend, whether it's the reissue of the Tom Ford Gucci horse bit, the double horse bit, the single horse bit, all the horse bits, tiny, large. And right before the reissue of the Tom Ford double Gucci horse bit, the long rectangular bag, right before that dropped, I picked this up and I had already kind of been on the lookout for more horse bit type 
Gucci bags. So the fact that I got this for so cheap, I am just so thrilled about. I love the fact that it's it has this really unique shoulder strap where it's really thick right here. And it goes into this thinner adjustable area down here with the huge D-ring, like I explained. So you can wear it in different ways. You can put the D-ring in the front if you want to be bold and make a statement. And it does say Gucci right here on the horse bit, which I love. It's more of a subtle kind of branding. So there's nothing on the rest of the bag at all. It's just all leather. Or you can flip it around, have the D-ring in the back and have more of like a large sack looking thing. But I like to wear mine with the horse bit in the front, mainly because you can rest your hand right here on this uh, thinner part of the strap pretty easily. But this thing fits so much stuff. The fact that it has a zipper also has this bag unmatched because you can stuff it and nothing's coming out. This was for me like seriously, win of 2023 when it comes to the pre-loved market. It's just giving kind of, no, it's giving kind of minimal luxury vibes. So I just needed a brown bag or a tan bag really. And this kind of fits both. It was just a win. If you can't tell, I'm excited for this. <laughs> so good. Next up for Gucci. Oh my gosh. They're so hard to put back in their storage mode. I still have the original bubble wrap and tape. This is one of my favorites though. Seriously. So it comes with a leather strap. I won't bother taking it out. You've seen me switch the straps enough today to know, but it comes with a leather crossbody strap and it's a two-sided bag. So whether you're wearing white or you're wearing black or you're wearing any other color and you just want a pop of white or black, this is the bag. This was so crazy to me. I saw it in the Bahamas and it was actually on sale. I think I got this one for 30% off in the Bahamas and so also no tax. And the gold hardware but the crystals on the panther head. Look how beautiful that is. It's basically two envelope style bags attached to each other. And yeah, they're very simple. Just an open compartment on the inside of each side. So super cute. I just thought it was so different. This is probably one of the most unique bags that I own. So I love taking this one out. And I have so many black and white outfits, like the combo black and white. So this always goes with that. I own a pair of the black Gucci loafers and the white Gucci loafers. And this off-white type of color is the exact color of my Gucci loafers. So I got them at different times, but it paid off. The links of the chain are even different. If you can see, there's like a double chain, a big chain on the outside and a smaller chain on the inside. I just thought this was such a unique bag. I cannot believe it was on sale, but it was in the Bahamas and they had such a small inventory. I lucked out. I love it. This next one was another bag that I've had for years. My husband hated this bag when I showed it to him here in Dallas. And then we went to Vegas and he was like, oh, look at that. You should get that. So leave it up to the man. Let him think it's his idea. And now it's a go. <laughs> I was drawn to this one because of the texture. So, of course, I love this bag in the winter and the fall. I just think it's absolutely beautiful. It's the Dionysus. So you see the snake, the serpent here on the front. It's a beautiful olive color with silver hardware. I think, is the interior like a blue? I can't even remember how to open this. Yeah, it's got such a beautiful teal interior. I don't know if that's picking up, but it's basically, there you go. It's basically the same color as this next bag that I'm gonna show you. So this one is the Gucci Marmont suede bag. I know people hate the Marmont now, like they absolutely hate it. And I'm not that big of a fan of it anymore either, but I love the velvet ones. All of the velvet ones came in such beautiful jeweled tones. Like I love the fuchsia, the dark purpley one, this blue one, and there was like a gold, I think. I wasn't a fan, even though pink is my favorite color, I wasn't a fan of the pink one. But all of the deep colored jewel tones, I absolutely love. So I still love this bag. I don't really reach for it to wear it. But when I think I need to wear that bag, I still enjoy it. I love the color and I love the texture of it. So I'll probably be whipping this one out for the winter time. Okay, last Gucci bag. It's a pre-loved. I actually did a short video on how I cleaned this bag because when I first got it, it was terrible. It was a bag that I only paid $250 for and I knew that I could clean it. I'd seen some YouTube videos on different ways and so I kind of combined a few of those recommendations. So it's this really cool moon-shaped hobo bag, which again, with the Louis Vuitton croissant coming back, which even came out with a crescent bag. So these moon-shaped 
crescent bags have been back in style for a while, but I've had this bag for a couple of years now. And it's just a beautiful off-white leather trim. It has its own take on the horse bit, if you can tell. It's these two right here. It's got the horse bits and then this combination piece in the middle. I don't really know the significance of that, but I definitely cleaned this bag when I got it because it was in such brown, yucky condition. This one's really cool. I get lots of compliments on it. I think it looks really cool when you have it under your arm. I love the shape. I just, like I said, I really like hobo style bags. So this one speaks to me. It's really funny. My, my best friend, who's like my sister, she's just so near and dear to me. We are always saying that we're the same but opposite because she loves structured bags. Like she loves the most geometric, angular, pointed bags. And that's just not my style. I love them. I appreciate them. But when it comes to purchasing, I always gravitate to hobo, soft, flowy style. There's a few that I have that are more structured, but this is my gym for sure. Let me see. Make sure I don't have... Oh, I have one more Gucci. I forgot I had this bag. I brought it pre-loved. So this one, I think... I got for like 600 or something. But when the Jackie Hobo came back out, I got this Bardot bag. It has the this classic lock that is now reissued on a lot of the new Gucci bags. So I forgot what they call it, like this piston style lock. But it just has the little stick that goes into this clasp. And it just says Gucci right here. So very simple. The Bardot, this one is difficult. That's why I have it up so high and I don't wear it that often. I love the way it looks, especially with casual outfits. The shape is cute. It's very like 2000s looking, even though I think the bag itself came out in the 60s. But it's really a comfortable bag. It's just that it's so shallow that a lot of times I'm worried about my stuff falling out. So I don't reach for this quite as often, but it really is a cute bag. And I had to make sure I got it in, <laughs> in the collection. Now for low, my first low of a bag was this cute little blue puzzle bag. I love, love, love the puzzle. I love the slouchiness. These little mini versions don't slouch quite as much. They come with the strap. I have the strap on the inside, the crossbody strap. The leather is just so incredibly soft. These bags are just so well made. They can squish down for travel, but they're just so soft that I don't like to do that because I just don't want it to look too worn too fast. So I get a lot of use out of this bag. The size is perfect. So it doesn't matter if we're going to sporting events, which here in Dallas, blue is in all of the teams except for hockey. So I tend to wear this to a lot of sporting events. It can fit anything that I absolutely need. Like all my necessities will fit in here comfortably. And it's easy to get in and out of even though it's so tiny. So I love this bag. The next that I got, and I just published a video on this, so I will not go into detail, is my cushion tote. So love this bag, summer or fall, winter, uh, because of the color, the functionality, the way it can convert to different shapes. This is just such a cute classic bag and very, very, very functional, very comfortable. So check out the review if you're interested in that. Okay, my little teeny tiny micro bag. I love wearing this when we travel. This is called the Healed Pouch. This one is a little bit more expensive because it's got the anagram stitching on the front. So when we travel, I just do it as a crossbody. I keep all my personal items safe and sound. It's got card slots right here in the front and one wide pocket. So if you have sample sizes, Again, I can fit everything that I need, like a little chapstick, a little tiny sample lotion, whatever you need can fit right in that little tiny pocket. And then you have all your card slots or space for money right there. So you can keep it really close to you. So I love having this in my carry-on bag because I hate when I'm trying to like go to the store and buy a bottle of water for the plane inside the airport and I'm fumbling around in my big carry-on bag. So this way I can keep my carry-on bag zipped, my personal item on top of my carry-on bag. And all I do is flip it, give my card, put it back in and I'm done. So I always have some little simple bag, whether it's this, which is most of the time, or the, uh, the mini pochette also swore because they're tiny too. So, but usually with that, it's such a small bag. If I'm not wearing it crossbody, I do have to have it in my personal item carry on and still bring that in and out. So I prefer this. This is a very functional bag, especially when you're on vacation. I can wear this walking the beach or whatever. So this is more of a functional bag. It didn't really, you know, wow me in any kind of way, but very, very functional. And my last bag, uh, 
this I also got in Paris. And similar to the Christian Dior, these are all three of the bags I got. The Christian Dior, the Louis Vuitton Cousin, and then this one. All of the colors were only available in Paris. So it was kind of like what pushed me over the edge to get them. I needed the black and silver. I really loved the hot pink fuchsia of the Christian Dior. And then I had been looking for like two years for this tan, the classic tan Loewe puzzle in the medium size with the silver hardware. Because again, I have so much gold. I just wanted some, some silver. So I had to go ahead and just bite the bullet and get this. I absolutely love the puzzles. I know it's not for everyone. I'm not really sure why because I just love it so much. But the functionality of it, the quality of it, the suppleness of the leather, it's just, I need to do a review on this. Oh, see, I just love even, it's not a very detailed bag, but all of the details are so wonderful. Can you see this? This anagram logo in the smallest places you will find just the most lovely details. So I have only worn this bag twice. Once was in Paris. I said, I'm going to get it out and wear it while I'm here. And I'm so glad that I did. I have pictures of me wearing this in Paris and I wore it once since we've been home, but I need to take it out more. Like I said, I love the slouchiness. I always give it a good chop like a pillow before <laughs> taking it out and let me tuck this in there. There we go. And it's so functional and just really cute. I just love the puzzle bag. So I'm really happy that I have the medium and I have the mini because the prices on these are just getting out of control. Okay, let's see. I believe, so I already did a review on my entire coach collection, my entire Longchamp collection. A little has changed, but not too much. I can update those next year as well. Now, what I have never shown are some of my mid-range bags, like from Reprojects, from Off-White, from Balmain. So I have some other bags I can kind of show later, but these were my upper end luxury handbags and they're, you know, my collection, my hobby, my love outside of, you know, things that really matter. I know it's not for everyone. This is definitely absolutely ridiculous and out of control, but People love what they love. They collect what they love. So if it's not for you, just kindly move on for all of you other ladies out there that enjoy the same type of thing. So let me show you an overview because I laid out every single one of these bags that I talked about and I'm quite blown away myself. So let me just show you that real quick. I'm really excited to share this with you, my private personal love and collection. Okay, so that's 42 bags in my luxury collection that I have shared with you all. My voice is tired, my arms are tired, and now I have to put all of these bags <laughs> back in their dust bags and stuff them all over again and put them back on the shelf. So this is gonna be a lot of work. I hope that you enjoyed it. I love the fact that you shared this with me. It makes me extremely happy. And hopefully I can do an update or a deeper dive, whatever you prefer. But thank you for spending your time with me. And as always, I love you. Love and positivity. Mwah, mwah, mwah. I'll see you next time. Bye.